everyone. I'm Peter Klingman. I'm the product advocacy lead for ArcGIS Online. I'm here today to demo some of the new features at the June 2021 ArcGIS Online update. I'm going to cover new imagery capabilities introduced with ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online. I'll also cover editing feature layers in Scene Viewer, the new experience to add and create items, and also updates to ArcGIS Instant Apps. The June ArcGIS Online update introduces ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, which enables organizations to host, analyze, and stream imagery and raster collections in ArcGIS Online. This allows ArcGIS Online users to make their imagery accessible and easier to manage, and to extract insights from their imagery, while eliminating the need to manage infrastructure. Access to ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online is controlled through a user type extension. So we can go down here and see the ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online user type extension under the user type extensions dropdown. And if we select manage and then filter to show only members assigned the license, that I have been assigned this license. So since I have an administrator role, assigning this user type extension will give me access to publishing imagery and imagery analysis. However, if you want to provision imagery capabilities to a user that does not have a publisher, facilitator, or administrator role, what you'll need to do is create a role and make sure to enable the following permissions. So enable publishing hosted tiled imagery layers and publishing hosted dynamic imagery layers, as well as imagery analysis. So now that we've clarified that I have the necessary permissions to publish imagery, I can go up to new item and choose to create an imagery layer. And the wizard walks me through the imagery creation process and makes it really easy. There are two different flavors of imagery layers, each giving you slightly different capabilities. For the purposes of this demo, I'll publish a dynamic imagery layer. I'll choose the option one mosaic image because I have multiple images in a folder. I can drag or drop or browse for my image files. And once all the images have loaded, I can configure some properties on the layer. So things like uh, the source, resampling, compression, as well as some different processing options and the output spatial reference. And dependent on the kind of imagery that you're uploading, you'll see different properties to configure. So once those are all set, I can select next, give my layer a name and create. So let's go ahead and jump to a web map where I've added a tiled imagery layer and a dynamic imagery layer. And because I have some imagery layers on the map and the ArcGIS image for ArcGIS online user type extension, when I select the analysis tab, I'll see raster analysis in addition to feature analysis. If we look at these tools, we'll see some familiar raster tools, as well as some uh, deep learning and multi-dimensional analysis tools as well. So let's look at the calculate slope tool. And we can see that it has my tiled imagery layer for input. You can run analysis tools on tiled imagery layers and dynamic imagery layers, when you run one of these tools, it will create a tiled imagery layer or a dynamic imagery layer in your content. So I can accept the defaults here and optionally choose to see how many credits will be consumed and then run the analysis. So I've run this a little bit earlier and I have the output. And as you can see, it's already applied the default slope color ramp to visualize this layer but we can go in and change the image display. So these are additional capabilities that you have with tiled imagery layers that you don't have with regular hosted tile layers. So we can change the render to stretch or classify. We can change the color ramp to better reflect our data. And we have other fine grain control over how this image is displayed. Another really exciting component of ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online is the raster function editor. 
So with the raster function editor, I can chain raster functions together to create a raster function template. And once I've saved that raster function template, I can use the entire thing as a raster analysis tool and have access to the specific parameters of each part of the raster function template at runtime. So another really useful application of raster function templates is with dynamic imagery layers. So if we go back to our table of contents and let's go to this dynamic imagery layer. And with a dynamic imagery layer, I can choose to display the image. No notice here, there are a couple of different image styling options here that are not available in tiled imagery. And th these are some of the capabilities that you get with a dynamic imagery layer. But for display, you'll notice this little plus sign here. You have an option to choose a custom raster function template to display your image. So I'll select this grayscale and stretch custom raster function template, and I will select apply. And what's happening here is that the dynamic imagery layer is, is leveraging server-side rendering and applying the raster function template on the server and then dynamically returning it to the client. So it's a really powerful way to quickly visualize your imagery in different ways. At the June update, I can also edit feature layers in Scene Viewer. So let's see what editing feature layers looks like in Scene Viewer. I have this special event editing scenario open and I have a number of editable feature layers. So when I open the edit panel, I can see those feature layers with their corresponding feature templates. So let's add an event route. We can add that, that route within the context of 3D here. I'll double click to finish the sketch. And I also have the option to change the elevation of the line. So I'll move it up so it's well above the, the integrated mesh layer and I'll select add. And now I'm going to create a roadblock right uh, on, on this road. So I can add that right here. And using our feature template with some domains, we can select event. We'll go ahead and add that. And one more thing I'll add is a VIP parking area, which is a polygon feature layer right here in this parking lot. The add and create item experience has been redesigned to make it easier to create content in ArcGIS Online. Let's say that I want to create a new layer from an item on my computer. I can now simply just drag and drop the item from my computer to get started. This experience is also responsive and works great on a mobile device. When uploading a CSV, I can choose which fields I want to include. I know there's a resident reported field in this CSV that I don't want to include in my feature layer. The experience automatically finds my location fields and I can go ahead and save the new layer. Adding items from a URL is also improved. So if I select the URL option here and enter my URL, the experience will automatically detect what kind of web service I've added, but I can always override that if I don't believe it's correct. One other thing to note is that the create menu is now create app and it gives you access to apps you can create in ArcGIS Online. ArcGIS Instant Apps, the next generation of ArcGIS configurable apps, launch in full and have some exciting new features at the June update. I can now create instant apps from the create app menu. 
I can see all the instant apps listed and figure out which one best fits my use case. For this example, I'm going to choose portfolio, which comes into general availability at this update. Portfolio is a great way to display multiple maps and apps that are centered around a common theme. I'll use a story map, a dashboard, and a web map in a presentation that advocates for more bird habitat. I can easily add new sections from my ArcGIS online content. So let's find the story map. And then I'll also choose the dashboard. And finally, I'll also add my web map. And we can see here, I can easily click through all of the materials that are central to convincing the apartment complex to create more bird habitat. I can interact with the embedded apps as well. Another feature I'm really excited about that comes to portfolio as it comes into general availability is the cover page. I can now include a cover page that introduces my entire presentation before getting into the content. You might have noticed a new app, Countdown, during the last demo. Countdown enables highlighting the top features in your feature layer based on a certain attribute. In this example, I'm highlighting counties in the US on population density. That's it for my rundown of some of the new features at the June 2021 ArcGIS Online update. To learn more about the update, be sure to check out the What's New blogs as well as the documentation. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.